Uh, hello, this is Dr. Brian Weiss, and I want to thank all of my fans and followers in Italy and other countries where Italian is spoken for submitting these wonderful questions that, that I will attempt to answer here. It's always so wonderful when I go to Italy and participate in my workshops, my three-day workshop this year. And I want to thank all of you and also My Life Italia for making this possible. It's wonderful to go there every year, to meet you all, and to have these wonderful programs filled with great experiences. One of the projects that we like to do is to answer questions from time to time. And so among 500 to 600 questions that were submitted, and thank you for this, we've picked eight or nine or so to answer here, and hopefully we'll be able to do this again and get to more questions. So uh, with thanks, I'll start now. And this first question comes from Raffaella. So, mille grazie, Raffaella. Raffaella writes, Dear Dr. Weiss, I have been your fan all my life and would like to get your advice regarding those famous good purposes, which we in English call New Year's resolutions. We make at the beginning of the year. Are they really useful? Are there any rules in order to express more effective purposes? Well, Raffaella, thank you for this. I think to have New Year's resolutions or these famous good purposes that you asked about is a wonderful thing. It sets an intention for the year, a goal, a purpose. It's important not to judge yourself, not to feel that I'm failing or somehow not living up to my resolutions. The main thing is that you try. The resolutions should always be about love, compassion, nonviolence, patience, better relationships. These are the kinds of purposes which we're here on earth to learn. And so if you set the resolution, set your intention, and just try, that's the important part. The speed at which you achieve your resolutions, your goals, is not the important part. The important part is the direction. If you are moving in the right direction, you're successful. The second question comes from Andrea, who writes, Dr. Weiss, I'm really upset by the safety problems at a global level and would like to know if, according to you, there is an energetic way to help healing conflicts and hate in the world. This is a very important question in these troubled times. We have mass violence, terrorism, diseases, um, all kinds of disasters going on, many of which are the result of human beings not being compassionate and kind and loving, but instead being violent or filled with hate or prejudice or materialistic or selfish. So it's important to focus on those long-term achievements, the reason that we're here in physical bodies, to learn about love and compassion, to begin to renounce violence, to understand that at a deeper level, we are all of us souls, we're all the same, not just physical bodies. And instead of looking at each other as different in different bodies or different races or different religions, to instead see ourselves as all connected, all the same. We are all souls. We have existed in many different bodies, races, religions over our past lifetimes. And we will again. So if we can see ourselves as souls, and not just as physical bodies and know that we're all connected and related and renounce violence and prejudice, we'll be on our way to healing the planet. The next question comes from Sarah who writes, sometimes it happens to me to desire something and after a little while it comes. True, I'm speaking of small things like getting a message from a person I love who tells me exactly what I want to hear. Are these mere coincidences, or is this a sign that we are strongly bound? How do these synchronicities work? Well, Sarah, I don't think these are accidents or coincidences. Synchronicities some people have described as God's fingerprints, coincidences that are really there to show us these things. We're all connected. So whenever you feel that something is a coincidence, 
look at it at a much deeper level. See if there are connections. These synchronicities can be clues, signs, um, signs of grace sometimes from the divine that you're traveling along your path or that you need to make a slight adjustment. But when you start meditating and contemplating, going deeper within yourself, you can start to connect the coincidences, connect the synchronicities, and then you'll see the larger purpose. It's always about the learning, Sarah. We're here to learn, to grow, to evolve along our spiritual pathways. And synchronicities, coincidences that are not really random, these are signs. And we can use these signs to correct ourselves, to make sure that we're traveling along the spiritual path. We are all spiritual beings, not just human beings. And we're here for a greater purpose, learning our lessons of love, compassion, kindness, nonviolence, non-hatred. The next question comes from Angela, who writes, I'm a passionate reader of yours. I've always been fascinated by synchronicities that happen in life and would like to know more about them. Is there something in us or in our past lives that make these events happen in the present moment with perfect timing? And this is connected to the last question, to Sarah's question, Angela. Synchronicities are clues. They're not just coincidences. They're not random. They're not accidental. So they always have a deeper meaning. They may or may not be connected to past lives. What our past lives show us is what we've learned. What lessons are we coming back here to work upon? But when you have past lives, you also find that you're immortal. You're eternal. You've died hundreds and hundreds of times, and you've come back, and so have your loved ones. So we're all connected. We have these soulmates, soul companions, families of souls. And so sometimes when you have a thought, you're thinking about a person, that's not just random. Those are intuitive messages, synchronicities, and there's always a deeper meaning. I find for myself, if I take some time and I meditate or contemplate or quietly think about the deeper meaning, I start to understand what it's all about. Sergio writes, Dear Dr. Weiss, I am nearly 50, and I realize that in my whole life, I have always acted out the same patterns in my love relationships. Even though I knew that, and I've always promised myself that it would be different the next time, how is this possible? Where do I go wrong? Well, Sergio, it's very important not to judge yourself. When you get down on yourself, it closes the mind and you'll stop learning. So it's always about the timing, the learning, however many lessons it takes, however long it takes you. The important thing is that eventually you learn the lessons and you progress. As you learn lessons of, let's say, more compassion, you'll move on to another set of lessons, patience, tolerance, teaching, working with others. And so these, these are how we learn our lessons here, kind of sequentially. Sergio, if you're having difficulty with the lesson, you keep falling into the old pattern, just your intention to be aware, to be conscious, will help you to break that pattern. There's no shortcut. It's just a matter of when you want to, deeply enough, you'll make these changes. But very important not to judge yourself, not to get down on yourself. So often I find that when people stop loving themselves, when people stop treating themselves with kindness and respect, then they fall into a deeper pattern of sadness or depression that closes the mind. It's more difficult to learn the lessons. So keep loving yourself. It doesn't matter, as I mentioned, how long it takes. The important thing is that you're trying, that you're aware, and that you're moving in the right direction. Those are the important things, Sergio. So I'll move on now to Serena, who wrote, Dear Doctor, I would like to know if our children can inherit our past lives or our karma? Well, Serena, I think that they don't actually inherit your past lives or your karma, but they are connected with you. 
When we do this past life work, we find that people have been together in past lives, often many times. And there may be our soulmates, our soul connections, families of souls. We've been with many of these souls in our past lives. So you can sometimes share a karma. You may have been in a family that did something 500 years ago, and now you're working out the same karma. And your children are not with you by accident or coincidence. They've been with you through many lifetimes, not always as your children. They may have been your siblings, your parents, your grandparents, your good friends. Souls are always connected. So you can share a karma, but you don't inherit their karma. You can share past lives, but it's not exactly the same past life. And so you find these areas of kind of overlap. You've lived with these same souls many times. You may be sharing karma. You may have been in the very same past lives. And so working this out together makes a lot of sense. Dario writes, Dear Dr. Weiss, I am a psychotherapist and practice past life regression in my treatments. Recently, many of my patients have been telling me about past life episodes regarding water and floods. Is it possible that this means something for future worldwide events? Well, Dario, I find that when I do work in the future, which we call progressions rather than regressions, people kind of know that it's the future. I think in the past, we have all suffered through floods and drowning. By the way, just to digress for a moment, I find that people who have died in floods or of drowning in past lives often have symptoms in the present life of fear of deep water, and that makes sense, or often of gagging or choking or difficulty swallowing or taking pills. That comes from the choking or gagging in the water. Uh, but you're back again, so you know that death is not what it seems. So I think it's more about past lives. We've all been so through so many floods and so many drownings. Water has been around on this planet for much, much longer than humans have, than animals have. And so we've all interconnected with it in many times. In the future, I am a little concerned about floods because of global warming and the rising of the sea levels and melting of of ice caps and glaciers and these things. So it's very important to be aware of our planet, what we need to do to make it safe, to protect our planet. It's our home and a very important school for us. But I think that in, in these cases, Dario, it's most likely past lives rather than future flood. Matteo writes, Dear Doctor, I'm going to attend your seminar in Italy next May. And I would like to know which is the best way to get prepared and get the most out of the meditations. I have not succeeded in visualizing my past lives yet and cannot wait to do it. Thank you for your advice. Well, Matteo, I'm happy that you're able to come to the, the three-day workshop in Milano. One beautiful feature of this three-day event is that it is three days. So we can go very deeply in these three days. And not much preparation is really necessary. I will take you through many deep visualizations, regressions, progressions, and other exercises. So people will have lots of experiences. Um, I think if you do want to prepare, there are some things you can do. And that is perhaps listening to my CDs or um, practicing in that way. They're available through my life, but you can also find it on the internet and in different ways just to practice. Don't worry about having success now. It doesn't matter. Three days in Milano, we can go very deep, but the practice will help a little because you'll get used to my voice. You'll get used to going into deeper states. So whether or not you have past lives while you're practicing before the three day intensive workshop in Milano, uh, the important thing is to practice. It doesn't matter if you have past life memories before then. And then in May in Italy, we'll do many group regressions. Sometimes I'll bring people up onto the stage, but I think for most people, the group regressions will be where the action really is. And we're not just doing past lives, but also intuitive exercises, 
meditations, visualizations, and you'll have success in different ways. Uh, people meet soulmates and meet lifelong friends at these events. That's why I'm so excited to be doing it again. So, Matteo, uh, you can practice, practice with the CDs or DVDs, um, but try not to get down or to get into a success or failure mentality. Just practice. And then in May, we'll be able to go very deep. Uh, in May, about two-thirds to three-quarters of the group will have past life regressions. Others will have experiences in the other visualizations, but we're doing healing exercises and many other types of exercises. So uh, people kind of get what they need to get in those exercises. And I look forward to meeting you there, Matteo. Uh, another question is, I am just curious, through past life memories, is it possible to find out that you are someone else's guardian angel? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, I find that whether you call this a guardian angel or a spirit guide or a master, that when we die physically, we never die because souls don't die, but our physical body does. And we leave the physical body and we go to the other side. We, we review our life. We look over the life that we just left. But you can also be aware of the people that you have left behind, families, loved ones, friends, and others. And you can help them from the other side. And so you can become like a spirit guide to them or a kind of guardian angel. After all, uh, your children, let's say you have children, before they were born, where were they? Well, their souls were on the other side. Perhaps they were helping you out as guardian angels or spiritual guides. And so we do this kind of rotation. When we're in physical form and physical bodies, we have many loved ones helping us from the other side and higher level masters and guides. And when we leave and we're on the other side, we're helping our loved ones when we're in the spiritual state and they're in physical state. So it does work that way. We help from the other side. It's entirely possible and in fact, that's how it does work. The last question that we have in this series of questions and answers, and we have time, for example, when we're in Milan to do m many more, many more questions and answers. It brings us back to the first question, and that is, how do you suggest to start the new year? in order to get blessings and fortune in the months to come. And just as I said before, I would start it with intention to become more aware, to become more loving, more compassionate, more patient, to improve communication within families and groups and among your loved ones, to never act out of anger. In fact, to let go of anger, to let go of fear. Fear closes minds. Let go of anger, let go of fear as much as possible. Let go of anxieties and stress and frustrations and worries. Let go of sadness and despair and depression as much as possible because underneath these negative emotions lie all of the positive feelings and emotions that are part of our spiritual path. Love, compassion, kindness, connection with all other people and beings. These are the reasons we're here. These are the lessons to learn. So if your intention is to progress along your spiritual path, that's what I would do to set the new year in the proper course, your spiritual path. And I hope and pray that you can make significant progress along your spiritual path in this coming year. And for those of you that I am fortunate enough to meet in Milano, if I can help you, to accelerate your progress along your spiritual path. If I can, by helping you to have past life memories or healings or, or other manifestations of grace, if I can help you in this regard to let go of fears and anxieties, to have more love in your life, more compassion, more kindness, better relationships, then that will be a blessing to me to help you in this way. And so for now, I will say, uh, con amore, con amore, 
con piacere to return a Milano and I uh, hope to see you there. Mille grazie.